When I first clapped eyes on him, Adam, my husband, I thought he was a bit of all right. <laughs> Chiseled features, blue eyes, blonde hair, lovely high cheekbones. Ooh, I thought I was on to a winner, really did. It was as if we'd been made for each other. <laughs> Hang on, I think we were. And without sounding too conceited, I know he liked me. The dead giveaway was his jaw dropping six inches when I emerged out of this mulberry bush. <laughs> oh, yes, things were good for a while. Things were really, really good. We loved being with each other. We loved playing hide and seek and larking around. And we were so happy to be alive and so grateful that God had made us and that he loved us so much. But then, all of a sudden, things went the shape of a pear. <coughs> it's amazing how exuberant love can blind you. When I look at Adam now, great lump of lard that he is. <laughs> those days in Eden seem a million lifetimes ago. But really, the real trouble began with that slippery serpent. He came slivering up to me one day, oozing silky charm and empty promises. By this time, I knew he was a male serpent. <laughs> Now, I'm usually a very sharp cookie, but he must have caught me on a bit of an off day. <laughs> Ooh, he says, you're not allowed to eat of the fruit. I think that's rather mean of God. Well, I put him right straight away. <laughs> of course we can, I say, it's just that one tree. If we eat off it or even touch it, we're going to die at this. He started making a real horrible, funny, hissing noise. He goes, you must be daft. That's what he said. And then he said, that's a lie. And then he sort of beckoned me as if he was going to tell me a secret. He says, you won't die. He says, God knows the instant you eat that fruit, you're going to be like him. Your eyes will be opened and you will know good from evil. Well, I know what you're thinking. You're not going to fall for that, are you? It's the oldest trick in the book. But be honest, in my position, what would you have done? I mean, the fruit looked good, really ripe, and it would make you wise. So I took it and I ate it. And I gave some to Adam and he ate it too. But then all of a sudden, I felt this real pang of embarrassment as I stood there. I was naked. And I was so self-conscious. Before, I had no concept of embarrassment. But after eating the fruit, I had obtained knowledge. <coughs> and for a moment, just for a moment, I felt on a level footing with God. But it was only for a second... And then he knew, God knew. Why are you hiding from me, children? Have you eaten from the tree I warned you about? Well, Adam was the first one to pipe up, wasn't he? <laughs> to show what a grade A coward he was. <laughs> yes, we have, but it wasn't my fault. <laughs> It was her, <laughs> the woman you lumbered me with. <coughs> well, what a pathetic squealer. <laughs> but then God spoke to me and asked, how could I do such a terrible thing? And I blamed the serpent. <laughs> but the time for passing the blame was over. I couldn't blame the serpent any more than, I, than Adam could blame me. The time 
was time for us to accept responsibility and the consequences that went with it. Now, when people think of death, they think of a loss of a loved one or the end of life. But for me, death was in our punishment, banishment from Eden. When people read about us, they think us packing our bags and just going a couple of miles down the road just to carry on as before. Nothing, nothing could be further from the truth. The truth is, where we are now is a pale substitute for the garden perfection. It's dark, it's cold, and it's dank. There's no happiness, no love, no God. No for us, the, garden, the, the garden's not so rosy.